Okay, everybody, so welcome to the second lecture of our lecture series on case practice. So last week, we were doing some work with kind of introduction to how to do a case, what kind of things to expect. And today, what we're going to kind of dive into is one of the frameworks that you're going to use most often when you're trying to work your way through a case. And that's going to be called the profitability framework. So today, we're going to do a little review of stuff that we did last week. We're then going to go into a little review about framework requirements, talk about the profitability framework. We'll see the framework in action, and that'll be pretty much it for tonight, because I'd rather spend more time practicing uh, than just standing up here talking, because practice makes perfect. So without further ado, last week we did a lot of talking about case solving. So these four steps basically kind of summarize it all. So the first thing you need to do, you need to summarize the case and you need to clarify your objectives. From there, we need to go into making a hypothesis and we need to develop a structure. We need to drill through that structure and then synthesize and summarize everything at the very end. So that was just a very brief overview of everything we did last week. Now, today, what we're going to focus on is this second type uh, right here, which is making a hypothesis and developing your structure. So. We then talked a little bit about frameworks and why they're important. So it's very tempting when you solve a case to just create a laundry list of items. Maybe it's this, maybe it's that, maybe it's this other thing. You're going to tend to miss things when you do that because what if you didn't think about that fourth thing that comes up every once in a while? So with a framework, it tends to catch all of the things that you might miss. The key to a good framework is that it's mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive. So basically what this means is that mutually exclusive you can see here in the bottom right. So notice how we have international and domestic. So they are, sorry, my bad, uh, sorry, bottom left. So we have over here in the top international and female. Now you could have international students that are female. So that's going to cause issues if you try to do that. So instead, you would want to try and create two segments that wouldn't overlap, say male and female. And unless some magic kind of happened, a male isn't a female at the same time. So that would be mutually exclusive. Now collectively exhaustive is you need to kind of cover all of your bases. You need to make sure that everything is exhausted with the selections that you make. So down here in the very bottom left, you have Chinese and you have American. But there's definitely more than Chinese and American. There could be um, uh, Japanese, there could be Hispanic, all those kinds of things. So a selection like that would not be collectively exhaustive. When you're creating a framework, it's really important to create a framework that has both of these things. That will help to make sure you don't miss anything. And that's why we use these frameworks to make sure we don't miss anything in our analysis. So. What framework are we going to talk about tonight? We're going to talk about the profitability framework. So in a nutshell, the profitability framework is a quantitative method. This means that it's very good with numbers. Uh, when you're reading your problem statement, you're going to be seeing certain signals that are going to kind of highlight that you should use the profitability framework. If you see words like profitability or margins, rate of return, costs, or even revenue, all of those would kind of set alarm bells off in your head. Maybe I should be thinking about the profitability framework. And then one thing before we go on that I really want to stress and will be stressed throughout this lecture series is that these are great, but notice that that step that we're talking about tonight came with something before it. We need to make a hypothesis first. So before you even start using this tree, we're going to need to make a hypothesis. So if you remember something from this slide, make a hypothesis first then use your tree. So this is the profitability framework. And to somebody who's seen it for the first time, it might not make a ton of sense. But if I add some symbols here to kind of help out with things, it might make a little bit more sense. So profit is revenue plus cost. Or sorry, that should, oh wait, my bad. Other way, revenue minus cost. That should be a minus sign. Um, OK, but at the end of the day, cost can be turned into cost per unit times number of units sold. And cost per unit can be further broken down into fixed cost per unit and variable cost per unit. Likewise, up here, you can get revenue from price per unit times number of units sold. 
Now, it's also important to remember that this is just the beginning of what the tree can do. These branches could technically go on forever. We could, we could uh, expand on price per unit. We could talk about what's costing what and fixed cost per unit, all those kinds of things. But this gets the ball rolling. We can, what we can do essentially is when we learn about our other trees, we can start to use those after we finish with this tree to get a better idea of what we're looking for. So this is to get started. And then once you've gotten information out of this tree, you can then switch to another tree later on to get more information out of your problem. So that's going to be something that we'll stress in about two weeks or so. The flexibility of trees once we see them is really important. And then the other thing that you really want to remember with this, you want to make sure you explore all options of a branch before cutting it off. Just because you found a lead in, say, cost, doesn't mean that there might be a problem in revenue. So you need to make sure before you just keep drilling down through costs if you found a problem, just clarify, is there any problems with revenue? Because you want to make sure you can kind of can't, you know, get that off your list so that that way you can keep going through the tree. Okay. So let's see this framework being used. Uh, this case should look familiar to some people. The ones who were here last week would definitely recognize it because it's similar to the same case that we did last week. So you're a consultant working for a shoe manufacturing company and the CEO noticed there's decline in their profit this year. He has to find the reasons behind this declining profit and suggestions to improve profit. Now, if you didn't hear it, the big word here is profit. So just in case, we've highlighted it here. Profit. So you've heard that buzzword and alarm bells should be going off that the profitability framework might be a good choice here. That doesn't necessarily mean all the time it's a great choice, but for this particular case, maybe that's where we should start. But before we do that, we're obviously going to remember to make a hypothesis before we start drilling down through the tree. So let's see that. So before I even put the structure up here, I've made a hypothesis up here in the top right hand corner. Your decreasing profits are a result of increasing costs. That is my initial hypothesis. It might be wrong. It very well could be wrong, but it's somewhere to start. Then I introduce my framework. Here it is. So we, we obviously have a decrease in profit, so I've indicated that with a, an arrow going down in the uh, by profit over there. And now I'm going to start asking some questions. I'd like to know about costs in the company. So I'm going to ask the interviewer, what are the costs like in the company over the past year? Well, he tells me that costs have gone up. I say, oh, that's important. So maybe I should keep going through that segment of the, of the uh, tree. So I do. I say, OK, let's talk about number of units sold. So I'll ask the interviewer, how many units have been sold? And he'll tell me, well, they've been about the same. OK, sounds like there isn't much to be found there. All right, well, let's ask him what the cost per unit sold has done. Well, that's increased. So what I'll do is I'll modify my hypothesis a little bit. I'm going to add this piece in red. Your decreasing profits are a result of increasing costs due to an increase in cost per unit. So I've modified it slightly, made it a little bit more specific. OK, so from there, I can start asking some more questions going further down the tree. I can ask about fixed and variable costs. And after asking about those, I'm told that fixed costs per unit, they've been about the same. And variable costs per unit have actually increased. So yet again, I'm going to modify my hypothesis. I'm going to say that it's been an increase in the cost per unit, but that was caused by an increase in the variable cost per unit. So at this stage, all I've done is ask some simple questions to the interviewer, and I've discovered a huge problem. There's an increase in the variable cost per unit. Now, it's at this point that we would probably want to keep going. We could use another framework to help us out and specify what variable cost is the problem. Is it labor? And if you remember from last week, that was kind of a problem that we had last week. So, it's at this stage that you would want to maybe switch to another tree to get more information. But at this point, you've gotten some. Yeah? Question. The decrease in profits can also be caused by the decrease in revenue. Ah, that's, that's really good. So you've noticed something. What have I forgotten to do? 
what haven't I checked in this tree? So I've, checked, so I've checked the cost, but I haven't checked the revenue. So that I really have to do. I haven't finished this tree. So just to finish off the tree, I'm going to ask the interviewer, just to clarify, are there any problems or issues in revenue? Can I see some statistics for that? And he'll inform me they've been equal. So yes, that's a good catch. We need to finish the tree. Good. Okay. So. I, that's really the part of the, the case from last week that I wanted to cover. Actually, in, in like next week's session and the session after that, we're going to kind of maybe go through a different case and see how we can use another tree to then finish the case off. But I really wanted to detail all of this out step by step so you can see the thought process. Now, there are some disadvantages to this framework. Not every framework is 100% perfect. So one of the big ones is that the profitability framework is not very qualitative. It's good with numbers, but it isn't good with figuring out what variable cost per unit is the problem. Where is the issue? But that's where it's important to have more than one framework to back you up, to have more than one way to approach the problem. The other issue that you'll find in a lot of cases is the framework might end abruptly. So I made it really clear when I was going through that example that the interviewer just said, oh yes, the, the costs increased. Uh, yes, the number of units sold stayed the same. But sometimes what might end up happening is you might be just given a figure and they say, oh yeah, here's our information on cost. And it's up to you to figure out what it means. So a lot of times you're not just going to get a yes or no, up or down answer. And it will be up to you to kind of continue the tree on your own. But just because you got that figure and you have to figure it out on your own doesn't mean you should abandon the tree. You should keep going. And then the, the other kind of thing that can be that hard is figuring out when a branch is finished or not. So basically what that means is if you're asked for profitability and you ask the interviewer, what happened to cost? Well, they increased. And you say, oh, okay, sounds like a cost problem. But then you ask him about revenue. And he says, oh, revenue decreased. Well, now wait a second. Costs increased, but revenue decreased. How do we know which one is the way to go? We haven't quite finished off any branch of our, of our framework at all. So it can make it a little confusing sometimes because you don't know which one is the like overriding factor. Was it cost that caused the problem or was it revenue that caused the problem? So you'll, be, you'll have to dig deeper into the uh, framework. Okay, so just to kind of summarize everything that we just said. Basically, with the profitability framework, it's very quantitative, very numbers based. Certain keywords will signal the use of this framework. We talked about what the structure of the framework looks like, and we talked about where it could maybe go wrong. Now, if you remember anything from this lecture, it should be this stuff at the bottom. I made it in bold so that it's like, hopefully you'll remember it'll be ingrained in your head. Whatever framework you use, make sure to exhaust it. So don't leave pieces of it behind because that might be an issue too. You don't know. Just ask. It's always, it's always a good thing to just ask and see if there's some information that can be given to you. The other thing is one framework will almost always never be enough. You'll probably need more. So don't get used to just always using one framework. You should have two and maybe even variations on those in your back pocket to use at any time. The other big thing is you have to make a hypothesis before you use a framework. A lot of people will jump straight into the framework, but notice how I've stressed this over and over again. Make a hypothesis. A lot of times after an interview, somebody will tell you, you didn't make a hypothesis. I didn't know what you were trying to do. And that'll look bad for you. So just take the time, say what you may think is obvious as your hypothesis. And then the big thing here is also to remember that when you do make that hypothesis, remember that it's flexible. You could be wrong and that's okay. It's just there to start guiding your logic. And maybe if it's wrong, you'll revise it later. So remembering it's flexible, remembering you can change it. Okay. So that's about the, the extent of what I have to say about the profitability framework. I just want to highlight kind of what's left in the lecture series. So 
Next week, we're going to talk about the other key framework that we're going to use, the business situation framework. From there, we're going to really get into the nitty gritty of, of drilling down and figuring out if you've finished a branch or not and how to ask the important questions. From there, we're going to talk about mental math, how to do approximations, how to do some market sizing problems, and then we'll finish with synthesizing and concluding. And if for whatever reason you miss one of these, you can always get them on the YouTube channel that we've created so that if you want to review what we've talked about or you want to look at an, a lecture that maybe you missed, you can go back and look at it. So uh, with that, um, I'm going to leave this here for you. Uh, I'd I want to try and get into some case practices. If you didn't get them, there's some cases in the back. This is just kind of highlighting how you should do some case practice. The key thing here is we really want to know where you got stuck. It's not so important where you did well as it is we want to know what didn't go so well because that's going to help you improve. And there's actually some feedback forms in the back too. Um, if you haven't already, there's a weekly newsletter here at the bottom. If you could subscribe to that, we have some awesome news and you'll also get reminders about this. Uh, yeah. So is there any questions before we get into the case practice? Okay. Well, thank you very much.